For this video, I'm going to be discussing the Sprinco or the TacticalSprings.com chrome silicon buffer spring. Um, and this is the blue, is what they call the blue series. Uh, it's an enhanced power spring. They actually have three they have a white, a blue, and a red. The white being um, more or less the same as a brand new mill spec stainless steel spring. Uh, the blue is um, enhanced and the red is even stronger. On Sprinko's website or tacticalsprings.com, their website, they list applications for all three of them. And their application is, is kind of long and discusses, you know, the length of your gas system, the type of buffer that you're using. So you want to be um, kind of uh, selective about which one of the springs that you choose based on your rifle setup. Now this particular spring, uh, I'm going to put in a carbine length a uh, 14 and a half inch barrel uh, with a permanently attached flash hider for a total length of 16 inches. Uh, it has a carbine length gas system and I'm using a Spikes Tactical STT2 buffer. That buffer weighs, you know, 4 ounces, 4.1 ounces, so it's kind of between an H buffer and an H2 buffer. So the, the blue spring is the optimum spring for that configuration. Does it mean I can't use a red spring? No, I could use a red spring as well. But when you jump up to the red spring, um, what you basically do is you eliminate your ability to use cheap ammunition. So if you, you know, buy the steel steel case stuff or the you know the Tula the 55 grain you're really not going to be able to use that that type of ammunition with the red spring so if you like to go out and and shoot some good stuff and shoot some cheap stuff um, you probably want to stick to a blue spring or a white spring so throwing that out there right away so so you know right off the bat just don't be jumping into buying uh, the red spring and if you if you have a tendency to shoot the lighter ammo okay so uh, chrome silicon wire stock better than stainless steel doesn't take a set it will last hundreds of thousands of rounds uh, it'll last a lot longer than stainless steel um, I mentioned the benefits of this in several of my other videos um, why the military uses stainless steel and not a chrome silicon spring is because of corrosion. Uh, stainless steel is not going to rust. A chrome silicon can rust. So if you go swimming with your rifle and you use one of these springs, you're going to want to take everything apart and dry it out. Uh, so I'm not going to if you if you want to hear more of me rambling on about that, you can watch my my other videos where I uh, discuss the uh, stainless steel versus the chrome silicon uh, uh, springs, the uh, JP Enterprises spring. Uh, this particular spring, um, this chrome silicon spring, is made out of ASTM grade A eight seven seven. That's the certified valve quality chrome silicon stock heat treated stress relieved dual stage shot peened shot peen post winding uh, impregnated or plated whatever you want to call it with remicronized molybdenum disulfide uh, formula these things are it's the best steel that you can basically get for for this type of application NASCAR and Formula One they use this type of steel for their valve springs in their in their engines and that means these things are um, very they have a, a much higher resistance to heat uh, that would in in 
induce uh, performance degradation and um, uh, so it's definitely the better stuff uh, let's see the duty cycle of these buffer springs I think that kind of varies depending upon who's who is actually doing the tests but um, Sprinko says that the duty cycle of this uh, of their buffer springs is about 750 rounds. So that's that's a lot of rounds. Um, it's going to last um, for the life of your rifle, probably. Uh, other advantages of the chrome silicon uh, uh, buffer spring would be uh, a shortened lock time. Uh, it gives you a consistent spring pressure through the duty cycle of the spring and of course that results in fewer malfunctions related to spring operation uh, specifically type 3 type malfunctions you get a improved spring pressure throughout the duty cycle and of course I already mentioned the resistance to the heat and um, a reduced uh, cyclic rate and that results in uh, reduced bolt bounce as well. So you have everything to gain by an upgrade like this and really nothing to lose. Um, the disadvantage here is this spring runs about $20 and a 17.7 stainless steel spring is going to run you probably between $3 to $5. So you're looking at roughly four times the cost. But then again, this is the last spring that you'll ever need to buy. Uh, Sprinko ships these in this nice uh, protective plastic tube. And it has some phone numbers, web addresses, and not much else on there. Um, you can tell the related color of the spring. Most of these springs are dark, darkish gray color, but the very bottom they're color coordinated and you can see down at this end or maybe you can see it but it's it's got some blue blue paint on it to indicate this is the uh, blue power spring uh, incidentally this is the same type of spring that LaRue sells LaRue, LaRue buys their springs from Sprintco and I don't know if they put their name on it or if they're just selling Sprintco springs, but what LaRue offers is, is basically the same spring. And I'm, excuse me for a second, I'm trying to get the piece of paper out of the tube. Uh, paper in the tube has got some instructions on the back of it, which. Um, just talks about installing it and wearing safety glasses, uh, lubricating the buffer spring prior, prior to installation, and install the buffer into the color coded end of the spring. And uh, uh, limited liability and warranty. And that's about it that uh, it's on the piece of paper. So what I what I'm going to do today is um, I have um, my spikes tactical uh, lower here. And it has a uh, Spikes Tactical uh, buffer tube assembly on it, and the SDT2 buffer, and the stainless steel Spikes 177 spring, which I'm just. And the stainless steel springs have a tendency to be a bit noisy. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove this. And here's the spikes uh, buffer tube spring and here is the uh, Sprinko 
and it would appear that the uh, Sprinko has already got some grease on it or, or something. The Sprinko is longer when you compare it to the Spike stainless steel spring. Uh, this is this is kind of what I saw when I did the review of the JP Enterprises enhanced power spring as well. Um, that was longer than the stainless steel spring, and that's basically where they're they're getting their uh, the enhanced uh, uh, power or the is uh, increasing the number of coils on the spring. So the installation of this. Um, is just an issue of removing your existing buffer and according to the, the directions we install the buffer in the painted end and you're supposed to uh, lube this up before you install it uh, I don't have any lube present so I'm just going to uh, test fit it in the lower receiver uh, and uh, just to uh, check that the uh, fitament And of course, knock the camera over in the same process. And it definitely, it definitely does feel stiffer than the Spike stainless steel spring. I can't say it's necessarily. It, it does seem to be a bit quieter. It's not as much rattling from the spring. I mean, we are getting a bit of noise. Hard to say. So I guess the real test will be um, uh, assembling this in, in shooting it. Uh, and again, like always, I'm going to try and report back uh, if I remember to do so uh, with what I've uh, come up with for, for results. So there's not much to installing it. And... If you want to read more about the springs, uh, visit uh, you know uh, tacticalsprings.com or sprinko.com. Uh, I believe tacticalsprings.com is the subsidiary of Sprinko. And I'll in the uh, in the description section I'll put the uh, web address and you guys can visit it. And you can also buy all of these springs directly from Sprinko's site, and they're all uh, reasonably priced.